England. Okay, so they're from England, but color. So they're generally speaking, most of them are from England and they're mostly white in enter service. So what was the agreement when they come over? Oh, 
you have your book in front of you, go ahead and open it to the beginning of chapter three. Right? Profit, right? Profit, right? A lot of them came to make money. 
Anything else? Anything else?
where I was, see where I was, Tuesday. Stay in the accord with my son. Court with my son. But he's still here. Like he's still here. But I know the girls know the way because they would have more freedom, freedom to do freedom things that probably, probably, probably they wouldn't be comfortable, comfortable doing if they lived in my household. household. I just don't ask about those things. They don't call me up and ask me how they don't know how to bail them out. Well, but they don't call me up and ask me how they don't know how to bail them out. Well, but it's the same thing with the English confidence. They wanted, they liked the idea of being away from me because they could still be English, but they could get away from some of the rules and regulations of English. And some of those rules and regulations were relatively harsh. But being this far away, there was a lot more they could get away with and not have to abide by all of those rules and regulations. And there were a lot of them. And England had lots of regulations in reference to their trade. You know, anything that the colonists traded was supposed to go through like giant English ships, it had to go through English ports. The colonists could avoid a lot of that because they didn't have enough people to monitor what they were doing. And then here locally, almost every every colony had a governor that was appointed by the king. But the interesting thing was in the early years, who actually paid those governors? The king appointed the governor, so the governors had to respond to the king, had to answer to the king, but their paychecks came from the colony. So do you think those governors are going to be really harsh on the colony? Do you think those governors are going to be really harsh on the colony? A lot of times they let them get away with quite a bit. They didn't have to pay their paycheck. Now England changed that in 1760, and that's when we start to have more and more problems. But it's like being a grown kid that still has, you know, mom and dad to pay the bills, but yet you're far enough away to still be able to get away with a lot of stuff. But they were proud to be Englishmen. They did not want political independence. And even when, in 1776, when this country declared independence, it was a minority of the population that actually declared independence. The best estimates are no more than 40% of Americans really wanted independence in 1776. 40% were probably still very loyal to England, and another 20% were neutral. So this idea that all Americans joined together and every one of us were ready to fight for the cause is a completely false understanding of the American Revolution. Anyway, we'll talk more about some of that stuff on some of that stuff on the other side. You guys are going to talk about that. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. 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 I'm going to talk about New England. So life expectancy in New England was definitely much higher than in the Chesapeake or the Southern Colony. Um, what was the average age that people lived in in New England? New England. New England. New England. It actually went down. It started like around 70, 71. And then it dropped in the next decade to about 65. That's pretty good. This time period, that was better than most places in the rest of the world. So why do you think that life expectancy in New England is so good? What? That may be one of the key things. Is they had water that was less contaminated than the other parts of the country. Climate, water, water. Um, decent nutrition because they grew, again, you know, sustenance farming, but they grew all kinds of crops. Um, they really can't totally explain why this is the case, but we do know that in New England, people live longer. Which, Well, we so they were definitely getting a lot more than you know, other parts of the country. 
What about the Chesapeake what about and the South? Reserve life expectancy. What did you say before? You said before? Yeah. I mean, even as a wealthy white person, you probably would live to probably be 40 years old. I mean, you can have the best in the world, and yet you're still not going to live beyond about 40. Beyond about 40. And now you're going to do that, John. Thank you. 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 But it, it is strange what happens to you. What happens to you? Because I'm not heavy. Because I'm not heavy. But but you know, all my weight's dropped. You know, all my weight's dropped. You know, it all just sits right here. It all just sits right here. It's scary. Again. 
the nurse hands him a towel. The nurse hands him a towel. He wipes his hand off. He wipes hands his hand off. Hands the towel back to her. Goes to the next woman. Goes to the does the same thing. Does the same she hands him the same towel. She hands him the same towel. That already has. That already stuff has. Stuff on it. Blood and everything else. Blood and everything else. If he uses the same towel. If he uses the same towel. An examines all of his wounds. And examines all of his wounds. And examines all of his wounds. Okay. Now what does he do with that? Now what does he do with that? <laughs> and it talks about the fact that most of those women end up dying and they call it child dead feet because the woman will come down with this you know, severe fever and start having this unbelievable pain and they put her on the pain and they bleed her and they do all these other things and they say, well, just help each other. And then she dies in the end. And they cannot figure out why all these women are dying. And it's mainly because of the sterilization. They're infecting the women. Even the healthy women are getting infected because of what, you know, the fact that they're not sterilizing the sterilizing And even though that's a, a fictional book, you know, I, I know enough from what I have studied that that's the most maybe true. Was that happening in the nurse's building? Or was it just here? Or was that your Sterilization and the idea of infection and contagion and stuff like that really didn't take hold until the late 1800s. Yeah, and even though some people were beginning to practice it, it was still a lot of people that were still in the late 1800s. Many times, many times, many times, the doctors of our race were practicing their medicine thought that those people were just being those people. And they were being laughed at for these new things, these new practices that they were doing. It took a while before anybody started to say, wait a minute, what these people are doing is actually working, not as many people are done. When um, James Garfield, I don't think that in the 1880s, James Garfield was shot. Um, should not, the leader should not have been, um, should have died. The, the bullet wound was not that severe. But, but the very first, of course, the very first of the United States, the very first doctor who examined him, and the best doctor you know, in D.C. out to examine him, like seven of them come to like this. And the first one probes the room with his dirty fingers. And then he says what he thinks. The next one comes up, probes the room with his dirty fingers, says what he thinks. Seven different doctors do the same thing. None of them ever washing their hands or anything. You know, then picking up instruments yeah, that they have there, the probing the way they have there, dirty instruments that get in there, never cleaning anything, they were sterilizing anything. They were sterilizing anything. And he lingered for, he lingered for, he was shot in July and died in September. I mean, the man lives for like two months, just getting worse and worse and worse every day. Totally from infection. Totally from infection. From a bullet wound that he should have healed from, but he should have healed from when he healed. Because nobody understood, because nobody understood that they were actually killing them while they, they were doing it. Well, they were doing it. Generally speaking, they were. And, and the reason, like in this particular book, what had happened is all of these women um, should have already delivered. And they something wasn't going right. And that's why they had been brought to the hospital. And, brought to the hospital. and you know, like they were in labor, but yet the labor was going for a long time, and the baby just wasn't coming. So, like today, you know, in a situation like that, you would do a C-section or whatever. But in this case, they didn't know any of those kind of things, so they bring it to the hospital. But that was almost the, the, the death sentence for every one of them, because as soon as you bring them to the hospital, when they start using all these you know, non-sterile methods, they basically end up killing. And then the bleeding. You know, your book talks about yeah, this. Your book talks about the, the bleeding was the bleeding a was very common practice in medicine back then because they believed that you have these different, they call them humors in the body, and the humors all have to be kept in balance. And blood is one of the humors. And they felt that by bleeding somebody, letting them bleed, that they were actually bringing all of that into balance. But what they but didn't understand is we really don't, don't have as much blood in our bodies as people think we You know, it just circulates all the time. It's really not a forgiven amount. It's not a forgiven amount. I don't know how to do it. Anyway, but, anyway, but 
if you consistently believe somebody, you basically live to the death. Maybe then you just end up taking too much blood for them to be able to survive. And that was normal practice for just about anything. Oh, they're sick. Oh, they're dead. 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 Oh, they're dead
because what happened is that what happened is that there, there was I don't know exactly how to explain this, but there was like a shift in morality in this country that led people to say that certain things are not considered acceptable, and so it actually became more of a taboo in the probably. Well, definitely, I would say after well, the I would say it was kind of a the reaction to the whole of reaction to the, the looseness of women in that period. So coming after that, coming in after the that, Great Depression era and that kind of stuff, you start, stuff of a, you start to get more of a morality code that morality says code. this is not something that, this is not something that nice people do. Of how it began to, um, how it began 